Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. I wanted to make this video for some time and videos like this. And what I'm talking about, I'm talking about explaining uh, certain kind of developments and uh, agreements that were uh, signed or agreed between and Russia and uh, other parties or Ukraine and Luhansk, Donetsk, uh, Germany and so on. I'm talking about the Minsk agreements. So the Minsk agreements, who, what are they, what they, do they stipulate, who signed them and uh, uh, what's in it obviously and who violated or what violated, who's who, what's what. I understand that this uh, article that I'm going to read here comes from one source and obviously the source will give us an interpretation of those agreements and will have a, uh, a subjective interpretation of it. I'm mindful of that but if I were to pick each and every interpretation we're going to stay here about seven hours and we don't have seven hours. I might have seven hours but I'm pretty sure you don't have seven hours. So I'm going to use this article here and we get what's written over there. Might be a certain, thing that, certain things that probably would be omitted and interpreted in a certain way to fit the narrative. These guys, I want to push it, uh, want to push it. As for instance, the Ukrainians will uh, provide you different kind of explanation and so on. But the bulk of the information is accurate as I found it in other sources. So let's go and uh, start reading this article. It comes from Sputnik, Russian media so let's be mindful about it and uh, it says the Minsk agreements explained signed in 2014 and 2015 by representatives of Ukraine the Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republics Russia France and Germany the Minsk agreements failed to bring a peaceful resolution to the conflict in Donbass so Great Britain and United States of America are not included that means anyway from the get-go. Speaking at the meeting of the Council for the Development of Civil Society and Human Rights on Wednesday, Russian President Vladimir Putin mentioned the issue of the 2014 Minsk peace agreements. The Russian President said that Western politicians prefer to remain tight-lipped when he reminds them of the accords, accords, and I think that's true, which were supposed to pave way for the peaceful resolution of the conflict in Ukraine, but ultimately failed to do so. So what exactly were these agreements about and what prompted the parties involved to sign them? What were the Minsk agreements? In February 2014, the democratically elected government of Ukraine was toppled by the so-called Euromaidan coup backed by Western powers. Okay, so that's not good. The coup sparked a bloody conflict, people died, in the country's eastern region where people who refused to bow down to the new Kiev leadership formed the Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republic, DPR and LPR respectively, and proclaimed their independence. That means that they did not recognize the traitors, that's how you call them, who overthrew a legitimate democratic led government with the help of outside services which will make them will fall under the category and definition of traitors that's how it is so these guys in the east said you know we're not we don't uh, recognize you guys probably instigated by russia <laughs> right attempts by kiev to quickly bring the newly formed republics to heel via the use of military power failed they sent the mi ukraine military over there against the citizens uh, the hastily formed DPR and LPR militias armed with whatever weaponry they could uh, scrunch from local armories managed to hold their ground against the onslaught of the forces loyal to the new Ukrainian government and probably with weapons from Russia. Okay, Having failed to secure a decisive victory on the battlefield and with Russia and the European powers calling for a peaceful solution to the conflict, Kiev resorted to negotiations, which were hampered by the fact that the Ukrainian government was reluctant to talk directly with the leaders of the DPR and LPR. They didn't recognize the... So the, the guys who stole the government, 
of, of Ukraine did not recognize the other governments that were formed in uh, DPR and LPR. That's, you know, the, a thief doesn't recognize other thieves, let's put it like this, uh, to, uh, you know what I mean? Amid this delicate and precarious situation, the newly formed trilateral contact group on Ukraine comprised of Ukraine, Russia and Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, OSCE, and the Normandy format comprised of Ukraine, Russia, Germany and France. So you hear about the Normandy format is Ukraine, Russia, Germany and France managed to walk out what became known as the Minsk Agreements. Managed to work out what became known as the Minsk Agreements. They were named so because the talks were being held in the Belarusian capital of Minsk that served as the neutral ground. Now, the first of these occur accords, the Minsk Protocol, was signed on September 5, 2014 with an updated version of it known commonly as the Minsk II Accords being signed on February 12, 2015 when the previous iteration of the agreement failed to bring an end to the fighting. The documents are in full known as, and I'm quoting, the Protocols not of the, of the elders of Zion, on the results of consultations of the three-member contact group on joint steps, steps aimed at the implementation of the peace plan by Ukraine President Petro Poroshenko and the initiatives by Russian President Vladimir Putin. Poroshenko became the president of Ukraine following the overthrow of Yanukovych during Maidan coup. So he was the guy who took power and he became, I'm the president. And then he elected, I think he was elected by people, not the whole Ukraine. That's why they say, well, this guy is not legitimate because not everybody was allowed or wanted to vote, which is the DPR, LPR. What did the Minsk agreements say? Under the auspices of the agreements, the parties pledged to a ceasefire and withdraw the forces from the line of contact. The presence of heavy weapons in the area of the buffer zone was strictly prohibited. The multiple launch rocket systems Uragan and Smirch, as well as the Tocha or Toka short range ballistic missiles systems were supposed to be pulled out 70 km away from the line of contact. OSCE observers were due to monitor the implementation of these rules. In addition to the exchange of prisoners in line with the all for all principle, the sides were obliged to carry out the amnesty of those captured during the armed clashes. The Ukrainian side was also supposed to adopt the law on the specific uh, on special status of separate DPR and LPR district and hold local elections there taking into account the possibility of the representatives of Donbas, both Donbas republics. The day after the elections, Ukraine was set to take full control of the state border. So they would hold elections, uh, organize elections in Donbas all right, republics, and then after the elections, they will be incorporated, they will be part of Ukraine. That's what the plan is. Additionally, the Minsk Protocol stipulated the implementation of a reform in Ukraine which envision gate the introduction of a concept of decentralization into a country's constitution that should have taken into account the specifics of certain districts of Donetsk and Luhansk, Lugansk regions. That means they will have a special status, part of Ukraine, right? Like you have a federal government in the United States with the states and the federal government, something like that, I'm assuming. We signed, who signed the Minsk agreements? The Minsk protocol was signed by the members of the contact group as well as the heads of the Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republics. On February 12, 2015, a 13-point spate of measures on the implementation of the Minsk agreements, the so-called Minsk II Accords, were signed. And on the whole, the document coincided with the September protocol in terms of content. On behalf of the OSCE, the Minsk agreements were signed by the OC, OSCE's Ukraine Special Envoy Heidi Tagliavini 
while on the part of Ukraine and Russia, the documents were inked by former Ukrainian President Leonid Kuchma and then Russian ambassador to Kiev Mikhail Z Zurabov, respectively. The, um, the Minsk Protocol was also signed by Alexander Zakharchenko, then head of the DPR and, the, and his LPR uh, counterpart at the time Igor Plots Plotnitsky. The Minsk II agreement was clinched during a meeting uh, on the Normandy format, which included Russian President Vladimir Putin, then the German Chancellor Angela Merkel, Merkel, Merkel <laughs> not that one, then French President François Hollande, and then Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko, who violated the Minsk agreements. Now, this is subjective here, but they were going to give you some information, their information. Over the past five years, the Ukrainian side simply refrained from implementing political clause of the Minsk agreements, demanding instead that the control of the border between DPR and LPR territories should be handed over to Kiev first. These demands, however, were rejected by DPR and LPR authorities and by Moscow, who suspected that once Ukraine forces got control on, of the border and effectively cut off the republics from outside world, which was Russia. Yeah. Kiev may then attempt to crush all opposition there through the force of arms. So these guys wanted to say, no, no, you want to take control of the border with Russia. So the Russia cannot support you, obviously. And then we can uh, clinch you from both sides. That's what the, the provinces and the Russians thought. Uh, the DPR and LPR authorities, as well as Russia, have also re respect, repeatedly accused Kiev of illegally occupying settlements in the buffer zone and deploying heavy military equipment there. The situation was further exacerbated by the fact that the European, European powers repeatedly turned a blind eye to Kiev's blatant refusal to adhere to the Minsk agreements, Why, at the same time, constantly berating and the DPR and LPR for the alleged violations of the very same accords. On Wednesday, R Russian President Vladimir S Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov recalled that both Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and his predecessor Petro Poroshenko openly said that they were not going to implement the Minsk Accords. The remarks came after Russian President Vladimir Putin condemned Ukraine authorities for effectively killing the Minsk agreement starting that late February that the document stopped existing long before blah blah blah. blah. Putin signed a decree to recognize the Donbas Republic, blah blah blah, we know that. And then it was the, uh, wait, maybe that was important. Putin signed a decree, no, that was the, uh, the decree that he uh, recognized the republics and then incorporated uh, due to the a referenda. So this is the Russian side of the story. All right. Probably uh, they uh, all made moves uh, left and right, and they violated left and right. That's whatever. Uh, it's well known. Now in this time we have Poroshenko. He came and said about two weeks ago that uh, actually the Minsk protocols. He signed the Minsk protocols only to buy time for the Western countries, United States and Great Britain and other NATO states, to arm the Ukrainian forces for take care of those republics and possibly Russia later. So there was a premeditated thing. I mean, he said it is not me saying it or Putin said. I covered it in a, a video about a week ago, two weeks ago with Poroshenko, the former uh, Ukrainian president. Uh, I think he was Ukrainian. <laughs> Unlike this guy, I don't know what this guy is. He's a kosher guy anyway. So this is what they say. Uh, I don't think the Ukrainians had any desire to give those uh, territories to anybody, which is within their own right. The problem is, if you treat them like shit, what do you expect? You know? And then the other ones, again, Poroshenko and those guys who uh, uh, were after the Maidan, um, whatever coup over there, the illegal overthrow, bloody overthrow of those go the elected government, democratically elected legitimate government of Yanukovych, they, won they didn't recognize these guys for something that they did, but these guys were uh, breaking away from the country. So, you know, but these guys took over with the help of outside forces. Whenever you have inside actors supported by outside um, agencies, and there were agencies, then that you become a, um, and if it's a legitimate government, there's no uh, 
tyrannical or anything like that, which I don't remember Yanukovych being, and I never heard them being tyrannical or non-democratic or something. They were corrupt like any other government, more or less in that area and here too, okay? Pff, um, here too, big time. So uh, uh, you are called a traitor if you do this with a agencies from outside and you overthrow that. So then uh, for, uh, from the very beginning, you are illegitimate. You just take power, let's a thug. And you take a power and then say, I'm the president, I'm the boss. And those guys say, well, pff, Oh, time out, we don't recognize you, you are not legitimate. Yeah, you're not? Okay, send the army. And somehow the army recognized these guys as being the legitimate uh, guys and followed and went to bomb those guys. And those guys defended themselves and the Russians helped their Russian brothers over there, not gonna be allowed to be slaughtered by the Ukrainians. Would you? No. So then I'm surprised that uh, the military, the uh, Ukrainian military, follow the orders of these guys. But I think it was a little uh, insurrection, it's called. Uh, insurrections, uh, insurrection with weapons, killing and all that. And, and in the military and all that. So that's how, uh, uh, as a general uh, information coming from one side, the Minsk agreements and uh, whatever they claimed it happened, it happened. Obviously, this is just, uh, if you don't, didn't know anything about this, this is, could be a you know, stepping stone and then you can get more information from other sources and you complete and find the truth. That's how you do. And obviously, you realize that these guys uh, you find contradictions because you have to look chronologically and find who, what happened first and then what happened next. And that takes a lot of uh, research because you have to find out based on who did what uh, then you realize, oh, so this was a uh, reaction to this one. So these were the guys that initiated. And then one day, why did they initiate it? Have to go even lower, back, bum, 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 bum. Anyway, good luck with that one. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth, and be just.